Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Thompson of Talga Resources. How are you today? Good, thanks Tracy. Mark, you've just put out some substantial news in the last 24 hours. You've just made a deal with a company that does $100 billion in revenue uh, in 2014, Tata. Tata, can you talk to us a little bit about this deal announcement, please? Uh, sure, yeah, formalizes uh, the results of quite a bit of work between Tata and Talga, uh, working on sam graphene samples we've been producing uh, both in Australia and more recently in Germany from the pilot plant. And it really is, I guess, the acceptance from, from Tata that some of these products are going to be potentially commercial and they're looking for a source of larger scale supply. So this collaboration agreement starts formalizing um, what hopefully and I'm sure will go on to be a long-term relationship. Okay, so this formal collaboration deal is with the UK mm. Steel. It's the division from Tata Group. Is that correct? Yeah, the steel division, uh, which is quite significant in its own, in its own right, uh, has been probably the preeminent uh, large volume uh, end user in the graphene space uh, for a while now. So uh, their interest in coatings um, does actually span things like the energy market to do with some uh, battery coatings, for example, and fuel cell development. But uh, they all come down to coatings on, on steel products. So that's been the branch of the company that's probably the most advanced at the moment. Well, forgive me. From an investor perspective, I deem this to be uh, rather substantial news from the perspective that this puts you out front as a graphene producer. Obviously, Tata believes you can create or you can produce uh, commercial scale graphene. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, Tata, we've been working with, informally, we've been catching up with them for uh, for quite a while now, actually over most of a year, so uh, both from their scientist level, I guess now you're seeing the uh, more corporate uh, levels starting to, to recognise what can happen as well. I think the significance is also not just that it validates our graphene uh, production capacity and, and our actual uh, output, but also even as a graphite supplier uh, that is reaching into new markets, that I think is, is the most uh, probably um, the, the most serious aspect of it in that the, the markets you can access with ultrafine graphite as well as the graphenes are actually larger than the current natural graphite market. So I think this is definitely a, a commercial tick in those boxes. So obviously this collaboration deal you have with Tata really provides additional reinforcement about Talga being out front as being able to actually produce uh, graphene on a, a commercial scale. Can you tell us a little bit about this? I think a, a large group like Tata with the sorts of products they want to make, they recognise that they need a uh, potentially extremely large supply of graphene and it's got to have an economic side to it that's going to suit them as well. So it's a big tick in, the, uh, I guess, the confidence level they have of, of what we've already produced and what we'll produce. So what I thought was very intriguing with this news release as well is the excitement around the technology and the coding innovations in painting uh, for both uh, anti-corrosion and the environmental benefits. Now, I suspect that's just the tip of the iceberg. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, there's a lot of big things in there, but the coatings market is, is very, very large and Tata currently, the steel unit, uh, coats all of the steel that they then press into things like car bodies. So currently using a lot of zinc, a lot of uh, phosphates and also hexavalent chromium, which is a, a toxic and cancerous uh, product that's being outlawed in a lot of countries. So the graphene gives you the chance to actually have a much better performing product and be more environmentally friendly at the same time. So it's very appealing to a large group that wants a, not only a clean supply chain, but that wants to innovate to make better products. So there's a lot of companies that have been in the graphite boom, uh, but very few have announced any end-user agreements with actual end-user uh, companies that can actually produce anything with both graphite and graphene. Obviously, you'll be talking with Tata about your graphite too. Is that correct? Uh, that's right. So our graphite product as well as the graphene is of high interest to them to convert into a whole range of products. In their graphene work, they're finding that the particular graphites we make are useful for many, many other aspects of their, their business. Can I ask you to elaborate on that? I mean, obviously we have paint coatings, we have uh, coatings for steel. Um, what you, you mentioned batteries to me. 
Yeah, so uh, I am a bit very limited in what I can say, but you can imagine that the inside of batteries actually is a fairly corrosive environment that needs graphitic or potentially could have a graphene coating. And you've also got other sorts of battery, or I should say clean energy sources, uh, for instance, example, things like fuel cells, where you may have coatings inside or involving polymers and metals as well. So it's not strictly about paints for the outside of you know, iron ore tankers, uh, something simplistic like that, or even car bodies, it can actually include the energy market as well by, by way of including those materials that need protection. Mark, this is such substantial news. Can you tell, some, can you tell us how long the uh, timeline was for making this deal? Uh, we've been working informally, I guess, for about 12 months uh, on various, various samples, and their scientists have been working with our material now and publishing uh, work in this field now over the last 12 months. But now I guess it's time for it to come up a, a level, and Tata are a very innovative group, and they're, they're pushing very hard to solve a lot of big problems, not only in India but globally. And so, yeah, we're very excited that they want to feel comfortable enough to recognise uh, the relationship publicly. So in addition to this huge news, I think I just uh, you just put out that Talga joined Bosch and Lego in the European Union Graphene flagship. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Uh, yeah, we were uh, one of one of three, the others being Bosch and Lego that came in in this round. Uh, associate membership, the Graphene flagship uh, has got approximately 100 million per year of funding. That's 100 million euros uh, per year for graphene development. It's the largest research platform in the world. So it gives us uh, a lot of, lot of benefits and that too is regulated by a lot of scientists, uh, including Nobel Prize winning scientists. So for them to vet our situation, I guess, and, and invite us to join has been fantastic. So Mark, with all of this substantial news, can you tell us what we as shareholders should expect other than obviously, uh, you know, a lot of people interested in your stock? <laughs> That'd be nice. There would be a continuing rollout now of, I guess, further commercial relationships that some that will be able to be made public and others that won't but I guess we're in that that phase where we're producing material and we're starting to now roll out those uh, that commerciality getting larger and larger both, both in the graphene and the graphite space so um, I guess you know, that's going to be the main focus over the next six to twelve months. Well Mark thank you so much for joining us today and squeezing us in because I'm sure everybody's calling you. Thank you. Thanks Tracy. Cheers.